once a very, very large cathedral. It'd be kind of obvious by sneaking in there. Yeah. We're at the Glenfiddich Distillery in Dufton, Scotland. Should be fun to visit a Scotch whiskey distillery. was a soldier, a Scottish soldier, who'd wandered far away and soldiered far away. There was none bolder, with good broad shoulder, he'd fought in many a fray and fought in one. He'd seen the glory and told his story of battles glorious and deeds victorious. But now he's sighing, his heart is crying, to leave these green hills of Tyrol. Because these green hills are not Highland hills, or the Island hills, they're not my land's hills. Whereas these green foreign hills be mean, they are not the hills of home. And so the soldier, the Scotty soldier, who'd wandered far away and soldiered far away, sees leaves are falling. And death is calling, and he will fade away that far land. So he called his piper, his trusty piper, and bade him sound a lay of Ebrook's art to play. Up on a hillside, but Scottish hillside, not on these green hills of Tyrol. Wood nymph sitting there. That's a Highland bull. Cattle up here, they have very long hair to protect them from the cold. It's Sunday and most of the stores are closed, but they're charming little towns. A little town of Elgin. We just had lunch. We're now at Quarters Castle, and Marilyn will tell us about its importance in Shakespeare. <laughs> Marilyn? No. It's, the thing of Potter is one of the characters. It's one of the castles. Of yes, it's one of the castles. Yeah. And tell us about Cotter going to Dunsmere. And the saying is um, the ancient name for the Lord or the whatever, the king or whatever. Well, that's the prophesying of the witches at the very beginning of the play. And they said something about, I don't know, until... Yeah. <sighs> until Dunsmere comes to Cotter. Burnham Wood. Burnham Wood comes to Cotter. 
on the soldiers put the tree from burning wood on their back and put forward like that. What do you call it? We've now had our Shakespeare lesson into the castle of Cotter. And this is the entrance. I don't know. Maybe it's the Dowager Duchess that has the money. Tell you the truth, I don't know the difference between a Dowager Duchess and a current Duchess. The Dowager Duchess is the old Countess whose husband died. Ah. And the son is the new Count. Or Duke. So the dow a Dowager Duchess is a widow Duchess. She's a kind of, she's a widowed Countess. And that, this is a, an entrance to a maze. Part of the gardens in the maze. Although artists have flowers Yeah. It's a Scottish thistle. A Scottish thistle. Lots of bees in the garden. There's a bee with bags on his leg. I think that's a two hour store. I think you get a we were fed up looking at it. But then it wouldn't be private. What do you do with the maze? <laughs> We're out in the gardens now of Castle Cador. Yes. Uh, I never saw anywhere what the family name is. That's a Jerry Kirk today. Yeah. Getting ready to see Nancy. That's right. We're just waiting for the shuttle bus to take us down to the boat for our trip on Loch Ness, looking for Nessie. This morning we went through the official expedition, which was an audio-visual interesting presentation of the presentation of the audio and sonar and submersible um, and photographic attempts to prove or disprove the legend of Nessie. You know, that works pretty good. And get them to look for... Uh... Like That's that. right. You have to be careful though in case I run into the monster. <laughs>
that is born to be king over the sea to sky. Loud the winds howl, loud the waves roar, thunder claps rend. Baffled our foes Stand by the shore Follow they will not dare Speed on a board Like a bird on a wing Onward the sailors cry Are the lad that is born to be king over the sea to sky? This is the Loch Ness submarine. It takes uh, six people out, and it's capable of going down a thousand feet. They actually go down about 500 feet and then have a tour of the bottom. So he's going out and ready to make another dive. See his porthole is open. from about 1700. Good. We're here at the Battle of Culloden, which was a big, a big civil war. The last battle fought on Scottish soil in 1745. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Right. Okay. Oh, my goodness, my poor voice. <laughs> I'll never be able to do the same again. This is where the battle was fought. In the snow and the sleet. And this was a bog filled with heather and pretty deep water, kind of a swampy condition. People charged across it in the midst of cannon fire and did hand to hand battle. Yeah, this one one point. Here's our guide on our battlefield tour. When captured by the Campbells that fought for the government, they regarded these men as traitor to their clan, for they fought on the opposite side. Some of the heather is beginning to really blossom, just in small patches. It must be really pretty when it's all purple. There are rock walls all over Scotland. The guide said that these walls are Victorian, the ones made out of stone. This is the type of wall that was prevalent in the 1740s. It has a stone base and then it's dirt or turf. The rest of the Highland clans were gathered together and buried in mass graves in what we now call the Culloden Graveyard, which is marked by the last monument that we're about to head down to. Before we go to the graveyard, we always mention the aftermath of it. This 
is the memorial. This is the river in Inverness that goes down to the Firth of Moray. Pleasant town. There is Inverness Castle. Overlooking the river. Very pretty part of town. People out sitting on the banks enjoying the river, enjoying the sunshine of the day. Well, this is the end of the video here because for security reasons, you can't take videos inside. Just a few miles from Inverness, right on Loch Murray, is Castle Stewart. Just a gorgeous castle. And it's open for tours, but it's too late now. And on special occasions, it's open for people to stay in. These are the Clava Cairns, which are burial sites estimated to be about 2,000 years BC, or almost 4,000 years old. This is what's called a passage grave. It's ringed by these standing stones, many of which are broken. You can see how impressive it was. And then it's a huge mound of rock, which is ringed by smaller stones. You can see some of the construction of it. And then there's a passage inside. And this would have been roofed over. Of course, the roof is gone now. This was discovered in the 19th century, and there were a few human bones inside. One of you from inside looking out the passage. And in the distance is a second cairn. This cairn is also ringed with standing stones. This cairn is of a different type than that there was no passage into it. This cairn was probably never very high and had no passage to it. In the interior, when it was opened in the 19th century, it had been disturbed some unknown period of time before, but they did find the remains of cremations and a funeral pyre inside. So that
had to realign one of the stones to accommodate the road. <laughs> Here is the third funeral carol. Again on standing stones. You can see that they run the road right next to it, and the stone behind Sally had to be relocated because of the road. This is another passage, Karen. And the sign says that when it was opened in 1828, they found clay pots and cremated remains in it. It also would have been covered with a slab originally. out the passageway. And these are Victorian stone walls. Pretty typical Scottish lane. Stone walls on both sides. And in the distance is the railroad bridge. It looks like a Roman aqueduct. This is the fort at St. Augusta. It's now used as a Benedictine monastery. But it was a big fort. Built about 1720 and 1730. The fort was actually taken in 1745 by the supporters of Bonnie Prince Charles. They were shelling it with artillery fire and hit the main powder magazine and it blew up. Actually, a hotel. And it's called Castle Inverlochy. It was built sometime in the 1800s, and it's got uh, I think 16 rooms. We went inside, and it was really pretty. That was for about $330 a night. This is Glen Cove. It's 
site of the very famous massacre. Templeton's. It was a carpet manufacturing building. Really a beautiful building. Part of the park along the river. We are now in Glasgow. Suspension bridge, pedestrian bridge. It's a view of the Clyde. And this is the front view of the People's Palace. This is the oldest house left in Glasgow. It was built in 1471. This is the Edinburgh Cathedral. And there's a Bill Stewart, or Glasgow. I'm sorry, I've lost, lost total track of where I am. This is Glasgow. This is the infirmary. The building is probably in the late 1800s. And it's uh, in use today for its original use. It's a modern hospital inside. It's called the infirmary. It's a graveyard totally surrounding the cathedral. We'll see more after a while up on the hill, but these are all individual gravestones. This one is the gravestone of James Hill, who lived from 1520 to 1595. This is um, one end of the cathedral. Glass is really very pretty. It's a very nice cathedral. 